A lot goes into crafting a video game, and many times developers will slip in things that can seem as if the game has a life of its own, as if some sentient force is really behind creepy little discoveries that players find within some of their favorite titles. But some of the creepy stuff that we've found in games in the past seem a little harder to explain than that, and have spawned rumors and urban legends about games being haunted. Now, Some of these are complete fiction, that's for sure, and some do have a little grain of truth. We'll let you guys be the judge. This is our part 2 of the top 10 scary cursed video game urban legends. What a title. In at number 10, Final Fantasy VIII. Let's start off our list with a creepy urban legend that's a little outside of the cursed territory. Final Fantasy VIII is one of the most beloved games in the franchise, but there is an urban legend surrounding one of its characters, Squall, that is pretty hard to ignore. Ever hear those rumors and myths about famous people secretly being dead but then replaced with a doppelganger? People have been saying that about Paul McCartney of the Beatles for ages, and even more recently, of Avril Lavigne. Now, this conspiracy theory concerning Squall is pretty similar. At the end of the first disc of the game, Squall's impaled by an ice shard. He awakens at the beginning of the second disc with no visible wounds. No one ever really brings up the fact that he was killed either. It's also the point in the game where it becomes significantly less realistic, making many believe that Squall actually died at the end of disc 1, and that the second half of the game is all just a dream or him in the afterlife. Squall also sees his life flash before his eyes later on in the game, including a moment in which Squall doesn't have a face. One of the creepiest moments of the franchise for sure. Moving on to number 9, Luigi's Mansion. There's a very odd and disturbing scene that many fans of the game Cube title Luigi's Mansion have picked up on over the years since it was released. At one point in the game, when lightning strikes during the blackout, Luigi can pick up a phone for help. When the lightning strikes, though, in the background, you can see Luigi's body up in the air, appearing as if he's being hung. It's worth noting that the original GameCube title made use of dynamic shadows in its mechanics. Whenever Luigi would move his flashlight around, the shadows would act appropriately based on what shapes and objects were in the room. This makes this even creepier, because this shadow clearly wasn't generated by any sort of object or in game light source. It just appeared. And it looks like Luigi is floating, so it can't be the shadow of him standing next to the phone. Many believe it is simply an Easter egg, while others think it's sort of a threat within the game, or that there's a possible ending in the game in which Luigi commits suicide. Another popular belief is that it's something that was accidentally left in the game from an earlier version that contained a much darker plot. Moving on to number 8, Tails Doll. For whatever reason, Sonic games spark a lot of scary urban legends. Guess it's just something about the fan base. This one in particular has to do with the racing game Sonic R. The tale usually follows a father and son who become obsessed with the game, and almost unlock all of the hidden characters in one night's worth of play. One of those unlockable characters is Tails Doll, a robotic doll crafted by Dr. Robotnik that looks like Tails. He is a strange character to say the least, and one that feels a little like he doesn't really belong in the title. But anywho, as they play, the son gets tired and goes to bed, but the dad decides to keep on going, playing late into the night. The game begins to heavily glitch when he plays as Tails Doll, who, depending on the version of the myth, begins to look back at him through the screen, is unresponsive, and in general starts exhibiting creepy behavior. Now, Some versions of the story entail a power outage in which the console and game shut off. Other versions just jump to this moment. The dad begins to hear knocking on the door of the room that he's playing in. Thinking it's his son, he calls out for him to go back to bed. But the knocking persists. So he gets up and opens the door. That's when he comes face to face with a real life Tails doll, covered in blood, looking at him dead in the eyes. And at 7, Lair. Here we have a game that isn't so much cursed for players, but rather it's said to have cast a curse on those who had made it. So for context, Lair is a game that was released in 2007, an action adventure title that was developed by a company called Factor 5 and published by Sony. And when it was released, it got panned hard by critics, with some even calling it one of the most disappointing games of the decade. While it's very well just another tragic game development story, filled with delays, bad decisions, conflict with the publisher, and much, much more, some began to claim that the game was something more nefarious than what was being let on to the public. Rumors concerning the game and those behind it began to circulate online. Apparently, its production and rollout were severely troubled, with several members of the creative team behind it suffering from serious health issues, or they had relatives that died during the game's development. After the game was released, Factor 5 eventually went bankrupt. Some believe that this was because of the Lair curse, while others think it was just inevitable cause and effect of creating a 25 Five million dollar game that bombed on the market. And at six, Sonic EXE. Sonic EXE is an urban legend that a few of you in the comments of our part one suggested that we mention. So here we go. It's one of the most popular creepy video game urban legends out there. So the story goes that a gamer received an unmarked disc from his friend and popped it into his computer, only to discover that it was a PC ported copy of the original Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Genesis. Although something was slightly off about the game. When the player hit start, the title screen flickered for a moment, showing a demonic Sonic with flames in the background. It gets weirder from there. The game opens up. 
up a character select, and the player can see Tails, Robotnik, and Knuckles, with only Tails available to play. This is not an option in the original game, by the way. So he selects Tails, thinking that this must be some sort of modded version of the game. The game seems normal at first until he realizes that there are no enemies. Eventually, Tails slows down and stops running. As he keeps walking, he comes face to face with Sonic, but this is no regular Sonic. He is demonic looking. He begins to taunt and chase Tails until he violently attacks the character. The character select reappears, and the player is forced to choose Knuckles. Something similar happens with the demonic Sonic appearing. Next up is Robotnik, and he looks scared as hell. And of course, the same thing happens with Robotnik getting attacked by Sonic. The game then ends, and this is where the myth usually differs. Usually, the title ends with a demonic message from Sonic. Other times, the game ends, and the player sees the corpses of Tails, Knuckles, and Robotnik. And other times, the player sees all of the above, and turns around to discover a plush doll of Sonic covered in blood seated in the room with them. What's with all these plush dolls and Sonic? And at number 5, Grand Theft Auto Dead Bodies. In GTA 5, there's a whole side quest that's known as Murder Mystery. You go around Los Santos discovering clues pertaining to a mysterious murder that's connected to the film industry in the game. It all leads up to finding a handful of dead bodies and a reward of two noir snapmatic filters. Yes, slightly anticlimactic if we're being honest. But what makes this creepy compared to other missions in the game? It's the fact that unlike other side missions, there is no introductory message informing you about it. This has led some players to suspect that perhaps the mission is actually a subtle shout out to a real crime in LA, and that someone at Rockstar is using the game to reveal a murder mystery in real life. Moving on to number 4, Sad Satan. It's unknown when the game Sad Satan actually came out. It became popular after a YouTube channel called Obscure Horror Corner shared their game recordings of it, claiming they found the game on the deep web and it was suggested to them by an anonymous user. The game is made up of monochromatic corridors that you walk down as distorted or reversed audio samples play on loop. Images will intermittently appear, ones that feature child abuse, pedophiles, famous murderers or serial killers, political figures, and other violent acts, including someone who has been hit by a truck and a beheading. As they played, occasionally a black screen would appear with the Wingding font on it. Someone on Reddit decoded the screens to discover that they were filled with eerie messages the likes of, I can track you, kill 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 again, and you are on my list. At the end of the game, the phrase, suffering doesn't end appears. Sad Satan was the last game that Obscure Horror Corner ever covered on their channel, and ever since, they've gone completely MIA, abandoning their channel altogether. Rumors have it that the game is cursed, while others believe it was created by the owners of the channel in order to increase their subscriber count and views. Other versions of the story suggest that the owners of the channel decide to go into hiding after a version of Sad Satan became available online, and it was filled with malware, which seriously screwed around with a lot of people's computers. Moving on to number 3, The Theater. The Theater is an urban legend about an old game that some debate whether or not it even exists. Apparently, it was released around the same time as the original Doom, and it can only be found in what appears to be a bootleg CD-ROM. The legitimate copies of the game feature a blank cover with the sprite of what has become known as the Ticket Taker, the only character in the game. He's a poorly drawn, pixelated, bald white man with red lips and a red vest, and is utterly emotionless. The cover has nothing else on it. No developer name, no title, nothing. The game is set to have issues installing, but once it's up and running, the main menu takes you to an empty street with a movie theater on it. Once you've hit play and entered the movie theater, it's entirely empty except for the ticket taker. You go up to him and a text box appears that reads, Thank you, please enjoy the movie. You then move down a hallway towards a theater, but the screen eventually fades to black. When it fades back in, you were back in the lobby of the movie theater with the only thing to do is the thing that you just did. Again, and again, and again. Until after what feels like over a hundred times of doing the same action, you return to the lobby and the ticket taker isn't there. When you walk towards the hallway, the text box still pops up despite the ticket taker being absent. This time, when you walk down the hallway, it fades to black, but you do not go back to the lobby right away. Instead, you continue to hear the footstep sound effect as you go further and further into the darkness. Eventually, though, you see something. It's the ticket taker sprite, but instead of his regular head, he now has a black and white swirl, which players have come to call the swirly head man. Players who see the swirly head man have claimed to be immediately ill afterwards. Nothing happens in the game for a while until a loud piercing screech plays through the game and it glitches. You then return to the lobby abruptly. If you continue to walk down the hallway, eventually the ticket taker appears to be pacing back and forth, with his eyes and mouth wide open in fear. Some players noted the movie posters in the lobby would change to horrific images or images of the swirly headman. When you speak to the ticket taker this time, the text in the text box is illegible, and a low quality audio clip plays that many believe is a voice saying the words never reach the other levels. The screen fades out, and when it comes back, you are in the lobby once more with a brick wall covering the entranceway to the theater. No one has ever been able to get beyond that part of the game, and many claim to have experienced negative health side effects after seeing the swirly headman. Man. And at number 2, Taboo the Sixth Sense. Taboo the Sixth Sense was a game for the NES that was essentially a tarot card game simulator. Players would enter their name and age into the game, and the game would use a series of algorithms to take guesses at various things, just like 
real life tarot cards. Except it started predicting some really weird stuff. Rumors started to surface that the game had correctly guessed the deaths of several players who passed away shortly after playing it. Then the game was quietly taken off the market, making many believe it was somehow involved in a conspiracy theory, or that it was in fact just cursed. And finally, in at number one, Kill Switch. Kill Switch is one of the creepiest video game urban legends kicking around on the interwebs. According to the myth, the game was developed by a Soviet gaming company called Carvina Co. in 1989. Not much is known about the company aside from the fact that they create existential puzzles and mind games, and that their titles have political undertones. They also have a YouTube channel, but whether or not any of that is actually real or you know nonfiction, who knows? Anyway, Kill Switch is one of their games, and only a limited amount of copies of it were produced, estimated between 5,000 and 10,000. It was a survival horror title, and you had to choose between playing as either a girl named Porto or an invisible demon named Gast, navigating your way through an abandoned coal mine. No one has ever beaten the game as Gast since it was pretty much impossible, and if you beat it as Porto, the game would erase itself from your hard drive. Here's where it gets creepy though. In 2005, an unopened copy of the game popped up on eBay, and a man in Japan named Yamamoto Ryuchi bought it for a total of $733,000. He had planned to record himself playing the game and put it up on YouTube. But only one video of the man ever surfaced, and it was of him crying and staring at his computer screen, literally crying for a minute and 45 seconds. That's it. All right, there we have it, friends. What other creepy video game urban legends do you know about? Which ones from our part one and part two list freaked you out the most? Let us know in those comments below. And hey, while you're at it, if you dug this video, hit that like button and subscribe to Top 10 Gaming for more lists just like this one. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching, friends. I'll catch you all in the next video.